Google Vault is an important tool for complying with state and federal data retention policies and for complying with criminal investigations uh, or Freedom of Information Act requests. In order for Vault to help you, it must be configured correctly. Let me show you how. Hi, my name is John Sowash. Welcome to the Google Admin Bootcamp. To begin configuring Google Vault, we are going to open up the Google Admin Console, head to Apps and Google Workspace. Google Vault will be included for all Google Workspace for Education domains for free. If you're a Google Workspace for Business or nonprofit customer, this is an additional add-on that you'll need to purchase access to. So here's our Google Vault. Now, if you click on Google Vault, there's really nothing here. You don't actually configure Google Vault from inside of the admin console. Now, what I'm about to recommend is a little counterintuitive. Google Vault should only be active for the individual users who need to access it. So I'm actually going to click on the Google Vault service, turn it off for everyone, and then hopefully you have an IT admin group um, or a security group that you can use to enable Vault for the handful of people who need it. What this does is prevents anyone who shouldn't have access from getting into it. It also removes Google Vault from the waffle. Only your IT department needs to see that. Now to actually set up Google Vault, we need to visit vault.google.com. Now this will only be accessible to again, the individuals who have super admin rights or an administrative role that gives them access to this service. And this is where we'll actually set it up and configure our retention policy. It's ve really very easy to do. We're gonna click on retention and this will display the current retention policies for the services that are supported by Google Vault. And currently that's Gmail, Drive, Groups, Chat, Meet, and Sites. Now, interestingly, I just logged into Google Vault, it's been a while. They have just added support for Google Calendar. This is brand new. I have not set a retention policy for Calendar because it was just added. So even if you have configured Vault previously, it is important to occasionally review your retention policies in case support for additional services or new options have been added. If any of these services list no retention, Vault is not working. It's not collecting data. It doesn't know what to do and you're at risk. There are two different ways that you can set your retention policy. Indefinite, which is what I have for most of mine, or you can specify a specific retention period in the number of days. So if you wanted a year, you type in 365 and so on. Now, setting your retention policy is easy. Getting someone to tell you what your retention policy is, is significantly more challenging. State and federal regulations vary uh, based on the industry you're in. Um, state regulations vary widely, especially in education. In the state of Michigan, where I live, every school board must establish a data retention policy. And so you have to go to your board and be like, what's the policy? It may have been set decades ago. Other states have a statewide policy. You just have to check. I'll put some resources in the description for this video to help kind of um, guide you, but you may need to conduct uh, a little bit of research or chat with your general counsel to figure out what your retention policy needs to be. My suggestion while you have those conversations, make sure you just go ahead and set an indefinite retention period. And that way, once someone comes to you and says what your policy should be, you can, you can adjust it, but at least you'll be protected. Vault will be working. Now, you have one other important decision to make, and this will be true of all services. I'm looking at Google Calendar right now. When an item reaches your retention period, so let's say that you set a, a one-year retention period, 365 days. If an item is older than that retention period, what should happen? Option one is to only remove items from the vault if the user has deleted them as well. Option two is just get rid of everything. 
Um, and that one is scary. So that means that you'll never have anything in Google Calendar that is longer than 365 days. Even if a user has not removed it from their calendar or deleted that email or deleted that document, Google Vault will actually reach in and remove that item after the retention period that you have set. In most cases, you're gonna wanna use this top item, not removing things from the vault um, unless someone um, deletes it. We'll go ahead and save that. 365 days added. Now these are your default retentions here, um, but you can go ahead and set custom rules as well. And this is pretty common. So perhaps um, you're in a state where student records have to be kept for three years, but administrative records have to be kept for seven years. And so you can set a custom rule where your superintendent, school board, principals, their data is kept for a longer duration. And you can set that for Gmail and Calendar and Drive and all of the other supported applications. You can set that by organizational unit um, and some other options as well. That's it. Now we've got our default retention in place. Google Vault will begin retaining data from our domain and holding that data for the duration that we've specified. If a user removes something from their live inbox, Vault will retain that information until the end of our retention period. So you can see that information in Vault, even if it's not visible in a user's inbox or Google Drive. Now, this video is only about configuring Google Vault. Make sure you check out this video on how to use Google Vault to perform an investigation. If you'd like more in-depth training like this, you can join me for the Google Admin Bootcamp, a live virtual training that I host multiple times a year. Visit googleadminbootcamp.com to learn more.